Hello Aquarius, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into your weekly, but before we do that, let me just remind you that the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Deck and Guidebook is the deck that I'm giving away on my channel this month, all right? It's the deck that I use in this reading, and all you have to do is to be subscribed to my channel and leave me a comment letting me know that you are interested in the drawing, all right guys? Um, so let's get right into it. I'm doing things a little bit differently as far as the spreads are concerned. So if you're regular on my channel, do let me know what you think about the new layout. Um, it's the same. I'm still doing three outlooks for the week, but I'm just laying them out differently. Straight out, we have codependency. We have religious factors affecting your love life and wedding. Now, this is a general outlook, but I do pull the romance angel messages just to see what you may or may not be dealing with in your deeper relationships and connections this week. Let's get your animal spirits out. The elephant, fire energy associated with abundance, destroyer of obstacles. The deer, earth energy associated with the mother. Some of you are welcoming, are becoming mothers. Okay, you're either becoming new mothers or mothers to uh, a creation, uh, a project, but you are definitely coming into motherhood of some kind. I'll talk about it. The shark, beautiful. The shark's been showing up a lot lately, and I have some thoughts about that also. So before we get into pulling out your actual spreads, and there'll be three outlooks that I'm going to do for you guys. I always do three outlooks uh, for each sign. So we're going to pull out three spreads, but let's get right into your animal spread first. The elephant is associated with the Hindu god Ganesh. He is the destroyer of obstacles. Uh, he's the bringer of abundance, okay? Um, you can see there this ruby at the third eye just indicates his divine connection. Fire energy. Um, and with all animal spirits, the easiest way to get into animal spirits, because a lot of you watching my channel are getting into tarot, one of the easiest ways to get into the essence of animal spirits, which is why I love using them because um, they are so diverse and so specific, is to know the animal in the wild. What does the animal do in the wild? This will give you an idea of its nature and its spirit. Well, elephants live in the jungle. So a troop of elephants, in order for elephants or even a single elephant to really get around anywhere, it, they literally knock down trees to make pathways. And this is why the elephant is such a formidable animal spirit and why it is associated with uh, being called a destroyer of obstacles. Uh, because the energy of the elephant coming in, some of you who are resonating with this, you'll feel that this is almost like an unstoppable force. Now, the deer is associated with motherhood, and as I said earlier when I first pulled it, some of you are becoming new mothers. Now, I didn't want to get too deep into it until I saw, you know, talked about the card, but motherhood, we're talking about earth energy here with the deer, and we're talking about the traits of motherhood. So even if you are not actually becoming a mother, for instance, even if you're not actually having a child or welcoming in a child into your family, you can still be uh, vibrating with this energy or resonating with this spirit. And the spirit of the deer is to be very watchful, very nurturing, very loving, but also fiercely protective, right? Watchful and protective, guarding, at the same time, loving and supporting and nurturing. These are the aspects of the mother ar archetype that uh, we are talking about here with the deer. And so it could be that it is even a lot of times uh, this can be even a project or a new, a new thing that you are creating or manifesting in your life. It doesn't actually have to be a baby or a child or a person. It can be something that requires you to be nurturing and yet protective, right, over it. Uh, that can be an idea, you know, that can be a plan, that can be a relationship, you know. Um, it can be a lot of different things in our lives that require that kind of energy, and that's what you're resonating with, the deer. Now, the shark is water energy and a shark is again here we we talk about you know the 
the nature of the shark, how it behaves in the wild. Well, we associate sharks with lurking beneath the surface, right? Lurking in the water. Of course, uh, out, out in the ocean, they behave all kinds of ways. But when we talk about the impact they have on humans, you know, close to the shoreline, it's always that lurking shark that we talk about. And so here, this is symbolic of uh, a time or an energy in your life where you may not be... Uh, you may have certain feelings. You may not be honest about how you're truly feeling about some particular situation, yet those feelings are lurking just like the shark beneath the surface. They're always bubbling there beneath the surface. And though you may be trying to ignore them or act as though they're not there, they are there. Um, and just like with the shark in the wild, we are, you know, the spirit of the shark comes in almost as an ominous feeling like, look, if I don't talk about this soon, this is going to erupt. The sharks are very dangerous. You know, the sharks in the wild are dangerous when you don't pay attention, right? That's what's dangerous when you're swimming off of the shore and, and waters anywhere where you could possibly have a shark come close by, you know, right? So the thing is to be careful and to be watchful and, um respectful, right? So it's the same thing here. You know, if you know that, you know, you, the spirit of the shark would definitely be this feeling inside of you, knowing that, you know what, this is not going to end well. I can't stop these feelings. I keep pretending they're not there, but they, you know, they're, they're festering inside of me. And if I don't talk about this, I'm going to explode. That's very much the spirit of the shark. So some of you may be dealing with that Aquarius. All right, let's get right into your First forecast for the week. Straight out, we have three of swords. Ooh, betrayal. Ooh, betrayal, treachery, and unburdening, release. All right, so some of you, hmm, some of you are coming into this week and you've suffered a recent betrayal, right? You've suffered a recent betrayal. Three of swords is the card of betrayal a lot of times, and I often take a moment to explain three of swords and for my regulars, please indulge me. Three of swords a lot of times is considered third party energy, but I want you to think further than that and deeper than that. When you see this card, three of swords, three always being the number for bonding and loyalty in the tarot with three of swords, uh, the essence really here of the toxicity is that somebody has broken a bond that you've already established with them and they've broken it. You know, they've, uh, so this is really the essence of their hurt that we associate with three of swords. And so cheating with you on somebody else. And I say this because I think a lot of people consider this third party energy because of it being a number three and they immediately go to like, you know, somebody cheating on a couple, you know, and it's like, but really that's not the association at all with the number three here. In fact, what we're talking about here is the fact that three represents the unity. It, it, it represents the Trinity and someone has broken it. Someone has either broken the loyalty, broken the bond, they've betrayed your trust, right? This is why this is essentially the card of betrayal. And it can also be, um, it can even be uh, definitely representative of an abusive situation, and I, you know, sometimes you get together with somebody in the beginning, it's nice and you love each other and you develop this bond. And then all of a sudden, six months later or a year later, they start being a different person, right? And they start maybe abusing you, maybe even physically, emotionally abusing you or treating you in a way that feels like it's a betrayal of everything that you guys have built up so far. That is the essence of Three of Swords. So um, I say this every time I pull this card because um, I'm trying, you know, there's so many readings I see that oversimplify this card. And I think that when you oversimplify what this card truly is talking about, a lot of you may not resonate with it or may be thinking, well, that's not my situation because my person isn't cheating on me. This could still be your situation if whatever you're dealing with is a sense of betrayal. Okay. Um, and so that's what you're dealing with, my darling Aquarius, you know, and I hate to see this card pulled for anyone because it is a very difficult time. That's what makes it so hard because your heart is broken because somebody has betrayed you. That's also a feeling of being tricked or duped, right? So you also feel like your ego is extremely bruised or hurt. Coming into this week, you are met with the seven of swords. 
So now what's really interesting, Seven of Swords energy comes into you and Seven of Swords is even more treachery. You suddenly find out, and this is interesting because Seven of Swords can sometimes also indicate that someone who has been quite treacherous, it is the card for futility first and foremost, but I don't feel like this is the energy here. It is also the card for treachery. Uh, when someone uh, who you know or who is close to you is working behind the scenes against you. And oftentimes, Seven of Swords shows up also to show that this information or this knowledge of this treachery is coming out into light. It's becoming... It's becoming uh, it's becoming public, right? You're finding out about it, right? It's surfacing. And this could also indicate the spirit of the shark coming in. These these negative uh, emotions, energies, whatever, what have you, surfacing, right? Um, and this is what you find out. And the reason why I think this is the case for you is because by the end of the week, and it could be a sense of futility as well. It could be uh, that you feel quite, you know, you may be trying to fix this situation during the week and this, that, that energy of futility may be coming into you because you're not the one being treacherous. So it's not that energy, but it could also be that you're feeling quite futile because you may be trying to fix a situation that's unfixable. In either case, whether you're finding out that somebody is finding out some information that somebody has been really treacherous or you yourself are resonating with futility and trying to fix the situation, you still round off with a 10 of wands, which is a feeling of saying, you know what, I'm done. Whatever happens this week, you start off feeling quite hurt, but the events and experiences this week are going to allow you to finally let let go of a lot of burdens that you've carried. You may have been carrying this relationship in a sense or staying in this relationship out of a sense of, of responsibility or, uh, you know, just baggage, right? Whatever your baggage is, you may have just been carrying on with this kind of, uh, this connection, which was, if there's betrayal there, then there was always going to be betrayal there, right? Um, so it's like, it's a toxic connection, but it's like, it's interesting that um, you have this, like, there's this feeling that maybe you never really wanted to be totally in this connection in the first place. You may have already been kind of, you know, you may have been punishing yourself by being in this connection. Ten of Wands is really carrying a lot of baggage. And we all know what we mean by baggage, right? Baggage from previous relationships, baggage from previous experiences, things that we hold on to that we think, you know, are protecting us, but really they alienate us from being our best selves because of uh, the, you know, damage from the past or what have you. Baggage is so many different things for so many different people, but Ten of Wands is the realization and the final commitment to letting go of that baggage. And all of that is coming out of the events of this week. This is a good healing week, in fact. Queen of Wands, Page of Pentacles, and we have the Knight of Pentacles. All right, guys, so some of you are coming into this week resonating with the queen of wands, right? The first card is how you're resonating. The second is what me greets you, the energy that comes into you this week. And the final card is how you round off. So you're coming into this week with a queen of wands, which is also kind of impactful on the first spread because the queen of wands is the one who shows up when you are going through a difficult time. When the times, you know, when the terrain that you're navigating right now requires you uh, to not only be able to handle it, be able to learn from it, but also at the same time, be able to tap into your wisdom and your previous experience, right? To navigate it. These are all the things we associate with the Queen of Wands because she is... Um, she understands the nature of trials and tribulations, right? Things going up, being up and down, difficulties, you know, coming in your way, but she remains passionate. She understands how, fe you know, how her feelings can possibly be, be ripped around, but that there's a lesson there. There's a wisdom here and a connection kind of to that understanding with the Queen of Wands that allows her to be tough enough to handle emotions and to be able to handle difficulties. And so uh, this is what you're resonating with. You could be also, somebody could be coming to you and asking for your advice. The Queen of Wands 
is oftentimes associated with that wisdom that is a teaching kind of wisdom. She's very, very cautious and picky at uh, with regard to who she gives her time to, right? She's not quite as reserved and pulled back and cold as the high priestess who gives you nothing, right? But she is very reserved and she is also very careful who she'll help. But this can also be an aspect of the Queen of Wands is somebody has come in for you this week and is really asking for your... I want to say your advice, not so much your leadership like you like they would with the king, but more so your guidance, your wisdom uh, with the queen. And so coming into this week, you're met with a page of pentacles energy. So this is a real busy week for you, right? A lot of activities are coming in for you. Um, and this is, I'm going to say, in the area of work, it could be that your work is ramping up. Right. It could be that more activity comes in or it could be that, you know, whatever it is that you're doing for work, career, business. Right. Whatever it is that you're busy with uh, building your coin, you know, for your abundance and your and your survival. Right. Your um, subsistence, as it were, um, that's going to increase. You're going to have a lot going on this week. There could be a new project coming into you this week that you're working on. In any case, it's going to be a lot of sort of real grounded work, like actual, fit, a lot of physical work for you this week. And it's going to be difficult with that queen of wands, but it could also be that a lot of this is coming out of uh, people coming to you and requiring your input. By the end of the week, though, you round off with a knight of pentacles. And it's interesting because it's almost like you find a new goal with regard to your work by, by the virtue of what you've been dealing with this week. So an example could be this. Some of you, Maybe coming in this week, right, with this Queen of Wands energy and a lot of people, a lot of colleagues, perhaps, or people that you normally deal with at work or in your business career, whatever, are starting to come to you and ask you for advice, right? For whatever reason, they see that you have the wisdom, whatever reason they're being called to you to ask you for, for not so much leadership, but at least for advice to talk to you. What should I do? And, um, and by the, you know, I think by the end of the week, you find yourself in a position where you're realizing that maybe this is something, you know, that this particular area of advice or this particular area that I'm working in, that I'm being called to work in more is something I should follow. And so you find, you carve out a new path. And by the end of the week, you're kind of committed to that new path. You see what I'm saying? So it's something like that, that feels like it might happen for you, only by virtue of the fact that you round off with a Knight of Pentacles. And that's a very committed sort of goal-orientated night. So you certainly have must have made your mind up about some particular path uh, that you're wanting to take. And it feels to me like it's a bit new with this page of Pentacles. Very nice. All right, we're rounding off with the King of Cups. The Hero Fan and the Page of Wands. All right, that's just, this is the last spread. And please do remember to let me know if you like this layout. Before, I used to just uh, layer the cards on top, and we essentially didn't get to see the previous spread. So I like this much better. I like the interconnection of it a lot better. And you may be even still getting more uh, inspiration and clarity and uh, messages as you watch the other, other uh, forecasts. But in any case, final spread. Aquarius, some of you are coming in as the King of Cups, so you're wanting to lock down a relationship, certainly. You're very, very much taking the dominant role in a love connection, whether it is to take that love connection to a higher degree of commitment or to even uh, solidify the love connection, whatever the case is. You know, with the King of Cups, we see that energy of taking a dominant role right? In a dominant, progressive, intentional, active role in establishing your love relationship with someone the way you want it to be, etc. right? It's your world, right? With regard to that. You're coming in this week with this energy, very much the energy of the hunter. And this week here, fan energy comes to you. So there is a lot of, uh, a lot of your experiences this week are going to be quite spiritual and they're going to be quite uh, you know, they may be emotional, but they're going to be very much sort of spiritual and connecting you to sort of whatever your spiritual center is already. It's going to feel very much like, um, um, like you are recommitting almost right to your faith or to your belief by virtue of the experiences that are coming in. 
right? Um, it could also be that you are getting messages that commitment is the way to go with this connection. You know, somebody may also be coming into you and letting you know they want to be committed, right? Because King of Cups and Hero fans, like, you know, it's almost like you went, you go straight from the idea of a relationship to grabbing them and, and arriving at the altar and getting married. Because a lot of times we associate the hero fat with marriage. But it is also a recommitment to a spiritual path also. And so for some of you, you know, somehow your spiritual path and your love path may be crossing this week. You know, it may be... Um, that, you know, you may go to church or you may, whatever your spiritual activity is in your life, you may be finding love in that area, right? You may be finding a relationship in that area because these are two very strong energies to have crossing, certainly for here and fan to come in. By the end of the week, you round off a page of wands, which is a real feeling of newness again. A lot of pages have been showing up for the readings this week for the um, March 29th to April 5th readings. And here you have also page of wands, this feeling of really being excited, being very idealistic and passionate about your ideals and how your, you know, your idealism really and ready to sort of go for it, right? So there's a real feeling of something new coming in. Um, and again, this could very well be that if you are increasing your spiritual activity this week and you're also finding a love connection there, that can certainly be the spark point for a real passion starting off. You know, you guys come together within your spiritual sort of faith or what have you. And it's like, you know, you're together now. So, so many more opportunities opened up and you have this real sort of, I want to say this real passionate drive that comes through by the end of the week and pushing you on down this new, new path that you're carving out for yourself. Very nice. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, this is your reading for March 29th, April 5th for my lovely Aquarius. Let me know how you like the new spread. Don't forget to let me know if you're interested in the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Deck and Guidebook, which I am giving away March 31st on my channel. That's a couple more days away. Please don't forget to publicize your uh, subscriptions, right? When you go to your YouTube homepage and you have any subscriptions or you go to your settings on your YouTube profile, just make sure that you're... People can see who you're subscribed to because otherwise I won't know if you're subscribed to my channel and I can't put you in the, in the uh, drawing for the cards. So you may be leaving me a comment letting me know you're interested, but when I go to your page and I click on your subscriptions, it says this user has no subscriptions. So technically, from my knowledge, it's like you're not subscribed to my channel right, or any other channel because you don't make it public. So it's something that you all have to think about. Uh, when you're joining these uh, uh, drawings, you know, and people, I'm sure other channels are doing it also, of course, they're giving things out to do to their subscribers. You have to remember to publicize your subscriptions. All right, guys, I love you so much. Have a wonderful week. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to check out joining as a member. There's a lot of perks as a member, so check that out. That's the join button right next to the subscribe button. All right, guys, I love you so much. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week for your love outlook. Bye-bye now.